Hello Bumblebee and welcome to my channel, my podcast, Cafecito with Vivi. I am your host, Vivi, and I just hope that you had a wonderful holidays um, and yeah, holi different days, different holidays, depends on what you celebrate. I celebrate Christmas, but also New Year's. So uh, welcome to 2024. This is season two and we're going to start... Um, I actually had in my in my plan because you know I I tried my best to uh, to have like a list of uh, teams that I have for my for my podcast and my first topic uh, I wanted to to talk about the hierarchy of change uh, because I went live and I've had a little bit of conversation about that and I had had so many questions about it so or people that were interested actually about it um, but um, I recently. Uh, received some also kind of um, not all but some sort of a hate uh, what I said um, because I have mentioned that I'm a finance coach with a holistic approach which I focus on money mindset and manifestation process and and the thing is that um, because you know I have I have been open about me that I'm actually I'm I'm Catholic, so I believe in in God. I believe in Jesus, and apparently, um, manifestation it goes against uh, Christianity. So I actually want to talk about that a little bit because even though I have recently run into those perspectives of manifestation from the Christianity point of view, where they are debunking manifestation as worthy of God. Or that we believers in Christ should not be using, um, um, you know, uh, God as our main protector or provider because manifestation refers to the universe. So therefore, it's not God. Uh, that is a Christian point of view. So here, myself as a Catholic woman, who, by the way, I do love to read the Bible and I do prayer meditation that I have learned from, um, you know, my the school that I attended. It was a, a university that, that is a, a Catholic university. So uh, they provided me with um, with a book for prayer med uh, meditation. So that is a practice that I use. Um, I also, um, you know, um, th I feel that that meditation uh, prayer it has been my communication with God as in, in in that point of view. So that's that's how I feel, and that's how I feel that connection with God when I'm doing that that practice specifically. So. Um, Let's just start first defining, but uh, what is uh, manifestation? So manifestation is the act of bringing something into existence. So manifestation is not a religion like most people think. Manifestation is not a religion. It's just an act of bringing something into existence. By simply thinking about it and truly believing, like with blind faith, that it will come to pass, that it's going to be ours. And essentially manifestation is just having... A, faith, the blind faith and believing that God will bless us. Um, now, why why is it that uh, some, you know, they mentioned universe and stuff. The thing is that um, sometimes some, let's just say uh, humans, we humans have the word God and yes, we see it as something big, but we have not actually experienced God ourselves into our lives, we really don't have that um, that mindset or that approach to see what God really is. And God, you know, is God omnipotent, is almighty, and extends. Uh, it, it's not a one person or it's not a, a spirit thing alone. Like, it expands. You can never go outside. You can never go, in, uh, like, inside. You cannot like you cannot escape from it so that is that is how i see when i when someone says universe of course universe because it's god for me that is that is what is um uh, is god so um now that i give you the the um the definition for manifestation or what my my perspective is of manifestation now um if we see in the Bible in Mark eleven twenty four actually says, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you will you have received it and it will be yours. Now this is very interesting in this 
in this part of the uh, when uh, Jesus said that in and they explained in the mark uh, in the mark book and the um and the in this in this area it's actually when Jesus curse the fig tree because Jesus didn't actually say that an actual prayer he actually said like a curse thing to the tree you shall never uh bring fruits I don't have the you know I I said since the beginning that um, even though I, I do touch a lot of uh, but my beliefs into my practices, um, I'm not here to minister and to bring you exactly the um, the verses, but um, except for th for this one, because, you know, it, it just it, it correlates. But anyways, um, in in this story in Mark, where the uh, the part that says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours uh, actually came from that story when Jesus uh, cursed the fig tree because Jesus was looking for figs and it was not time for figs but apparently the fig tree had leaves so Jesus was already mad um, he was already mad for the people that were outside the synagogue and were selling and stuff so he threw the uh, he, he threw the tables and so whatever so um, he was so mad at the tree that he said, uh, you shall never uh, bear fruits again or something between the lines. Like I said, I'm not going to bring that uh, exactly. Thing just the, it's just for the part of the story. But he said that. And then the, the, uh, the apostles came and they said, Master, uh, Rabbi, or whatever they, they call it, it just... Uh, the Bible has lost so much between... Um, translations and through the years and if you see the new american english version new english version or whatever actually it does take a lot of words that they were before so anyways um yeah you can look it up anyways <laughs> so um and that's when jesus said it is yeah you tell me that i curse but actually i'm here to tell you that whatever you ask in prayer, so he didn't actually ask in prayer, he demanded to the tree that you shall, you shall, it was like a demand, a decision, that you shall never, like, bear another fruit. So now he's telling, he's telling the, the apostles, right? So this is why you have to believe that everything that you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it's already yours. So uh, this is the, that is the what the manifestation practices are teaching uh, as well. So this is not a manifestation of uh, religion thing. It is not. So even this, uh, uh, these people that have those beliefs, and, and that is okay if they have that belief. If they don't, if they said that uh, manifestation is a curse or whatever, the thing is that like, like any good things in in the world, men sometimes use it for bad things. Yes, of course, these bad people are using. But things, how many times we have seen um, people uh, explain themselves as religion and posting themselves as, as religion people and saying that, um, you know, and doing bad things, of course, all the time. So, but it's, that has nothing to do with the religion or, or that God is bad. It's just people has chosen to do that. And also, um, when I read this, this blog, because I'm like, okay, I'm going to dig, uh, I'm going to dip dig into this. I'm not going to bring who wrote the, the blogs or anything or the YouTubes, other YouTubers, because um, I'm not here to throw shade at anybody. If that's what they want to believe, that's OK. But I'm here just to express how I feel and what I believe as well. So um, what from my perspective, what I read into them is because what they saw on TikTok. Well, first of all, you should not be relying yourself on what you see in TikTok because uh, you know, we have this, uh, this culture that uh, if we show up with, um, you know, money or abundance in things or whatever, we're going to attract more people into, into our lives. We, whatever, whatever is real or is not or whatever, you should not rely your research and write a blog because of the YouTube videos that you have seen, because some people have mani have expressed the manifestation of s as things, material things, but 
let's go back to the Bible. It says, whatever you ask in prayer. So manifestation is not actually a thing that we do to bring ourselves to whatever we want. No, it's, it's just a process. It's like a universal law and, and it's, and it used to be on the Bible, like if you go to King James, actually, it, it does say the word manifest a lot. Uh, but um, with the new version, actually it deleted that word out of it. And I don't know if you have read the book, um, uh, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, and whether he was actually having an interview with the devil or not. The devil explained it that uh, he was um, he was actually molding or like people were working with him that were in higher pl places between politics, between religion, between uh, schools to uh, you know to change uh, the people, and that was because the devil didn't want not to, didn't want us to know that we had the power to change ourselves. Now, when I said that, and that's really something that I also read in different blogs and I saw in different YouTubers, that they said, oh, it's because you, you think you have the power, so you're better than God. No, 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 no. Manifestation is never saying, and if someone else is saying that, then it's, it's wrong. It's not what the manifestation is. This is not we are better than God. We are co-creating our lives with God. Because we are asking, not in the regular prayer that you have memorized, our Father who art in heaven, which is a great prayer, but don't say just because you have memorized it. You have to actually anchor the words because it's, there are powerful words on it. So this is not a, and it's not a begging either like, please, please do this for me. No, neither is God, thank you because you have given me so much great things and, you know, and, and coming from that perspective. Just like Jesus did to the, the, that tree that say, you shall never bear a, a fruit. So that is the same type of thing that we have to, to bring ourselves to. Not because we are better than God. We, we are actually not at all better than God. But we have the power within ourselves. So we cannot be saying that is the government, that my ex, my ex-wife, my ex-husband, or my parents, or my children. No, it's nobody else's thing for you to have the life that you want. It's in you, it's within you. And since God lives within you, so the power is inside of you and your thoughts are not silence. God are listen to those thoughts. So that's why we have to watch our thoughts. How many times have you think, even if you don't say it, but how many times have you think about not so nice things about other person? <laughs> Let me tell you, if you say no, I know you're lying because we're, we're humans and we have faults. So this is not saying like, oh, you're a sinner. No, absolutely not. But oh my gosh, just having a realization with yourself and saying, oh my gosh, yeah, I have done that. Okay, so how can I change me? Because when we change ourselves and we change our, our lives around it, guess what? We are projecting light. And what is God? God is light. So when we're projecting that light, then the world gets better. So yeah, of course, this is not nothing about uh, being better than God. Now, um, uh, this song from um, by Matt uh, Boswell. See, I, I'm Catholic, and I'm listening to this guy. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a Catholic. Some very conservative Catholics will say like that is not correct for me to do it. But hey, um, I listen to this. This is one of the really good. Um, really good songs. Um, the song by Matt uh, Boswell is, uh, what is the name? I, I wrote it here. Oh my gosh, I already forgot. I cannot believe it. Well, I have it on my, <laughs> I have it on my Spotify. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put the link for that song in, in there. But uh, the third verse, it says, God omnipotent and mighty, inexhaustible his strength, governments and fleeting powers, melt before his majesty so you see the strong of those words like how uns how unsearchable his greatness how inscrutable his ways seeing his greatness and preeminence over all created things 
all created things. Think about that. So if we had the power with ourselves to, to create the life that we want, so it's because God has that greatness and that premises over all the created things, which is us, which is whatever we have, we have desire or whatever, because guess what? The desires does not come out of nothing. The visions do not come out of nothing. God plants those visions and those desires. And actually the word desire comes from the Latin that says from the father. So who's the father? Swords. Anyways, um, I digress. <laughs> okay, so uh, then what is universe? So I'm going to give you the definition of universe according to NASA. So oh, this is this is wonderful. I'm going to put the link for the NASA too, where they say uh, says this. The universe, the universe is everything. It includes all the space and all the matter and energy that is that space contains. It even includes time itself and of course it includes you. That is universe. Tell me if this is not the definition of God within us and us within God. Tell me if it's not. It is. It is. So, uh, if, and if you ask uh, a theologist, right, what is God? Well, then the Western Christianity, uh, that is the thought that God is considered the supreme being, the creator of all things, and the ru ruler of the universe. <laughs> so he's the ruler of the universe. So he's the universe himself. God is often described uh, described as having three necessary properties. In Christianity, God is both transcendent and Im immanent. Immanent. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> transcendent means a God is wholly independent of the material universe. Immanent means God is involved in the material universe. So see, he's not even in or he's not even out. He's just part of it. He's all. He's everything. is transcendent. It's, you know, it's in there. Uh, so the things mani uh, the manifestation practices are is just blind faith, right? It's a surrender, like surrender to God, surrender. And some people is just like, some people don't like to think about God in that way. And I'm not here to judge those people just because they don't see it uh, that same way. They have another way to see it. Hey, listen, if you're Catholic, Catholic then you know that uh, the mother mary appear to different people in different times and looking different because everybody looks different things it doesn't mean that it's a different person okay so or the different being it's just that everybody has a different um the, the, how, how many times have you uh, have you seen the those psychologists that say what are you seeing here and then you say oh a woman oh it's a tree <laughs> you see, I mean, because we see, we have a vision, a different vision. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to hear to judge people that say, well, for me, it's universe. Okay. For me, it's higher intelligence. Okay. That's fine by me. I mean, as I, I really believe that as long as you, you have that knowledge that there's a higher power, I'm good with that. I, I'm not here to judge. God give us free will. And I respect that. I respect that from everybody. But of course, once again, I'm here to share my my beliefs, and my thoughts, and this is what I, this is what I think. This this is this is how I feel about God. It's just I feel that God is just so big to to think about Him as something so small or something so insignificant. No, God is amazing. He has done so many great things. Anyways, um, so. Basically, uh, you know, the surrender. How many times have the Bible has told us to surrender to God, to let him lead the way? Th that is the manifestation process. It's like we ask, but we let, uh, we let uh, our spiritual being that, you know, if, if, you, if you're, you're familiar with Christianity, then you know that we have soul. And that soul is the one that is connected to God. And that's how God uh, created us uh, at his image, through the soul, to the light. So, anyways, uh, not to have fear. Anywhere in the Bible says to have fear. To the contrary, right? So it's the same as the manifestation. And that we co-create with God. Once again, co-create with God. But that we are a powerful beings outside the, the things that are happening in this world. Government, um, family, culture, uh, war, or anything like that. Of course. 
But if we all understand that, then we're going to have a better world, definitely. If we really express our light within us, we're going to have a better world. That's that's truly really what I said. So, yeah. Uh, and it's just basically believing that everything is possible within us and also teach us how, uh, about forgiveness. Definitely a uh, manifestation process is something about forgiveness too because not even forgiving others and it's not forgive. I'm not going to forgive that person because what that person uh, did to me, this and that, once again, you're giving that power to that person. And it's not saying that that person did not do something really bad to you. It did. But it's just that um, that you are forgiving. And, you are for and sometimes you're even forgiving yourself. Because how many times have you called yourself, oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh, I'm, I'm so dumb. Why are you calling yourself that? So you have to forgive yourself also for calling yourself that. Especially... You are anointed. You are a creation of God. You are a beautiful in his you're a beautiful being. You're a beautiful soul within his eyes. Right? So so yeah, forgive yourself also for calling yourself those those names in truly believe. And it was um so um some people said that it it is not possible to have that um that power with our thoughts that is just it, it sounds insane or, or whatever. How many times have we seen people experience um, mental health issues and ended up committing suicide? And if you have not experienced that, if you have not experienced those thoughts, those, those inner thoughts are like, I, are strong. Those inner thoughts are strong, and and if you have the the power to have those in strong inner thoughts to lead you into into that, like killing yourself, like what makes you think you don't have the same on the other side, having a strong thoughts and having a strong mind to live a better life. Um, that is not something that I share so much with anybody, uh, but that is an experience that I had um, during a, a hard times that I was going through. So um, I'm going to read a poem that I wrote when I was in, in my darkest uh, moments. And I, I call it Inner Thoughts. My brain is circulating. I am going around on my tail like a dog. So many thoughts, and mostly bad thoughts. This fear came in like falling again into darkness. I am scared of those thoughts. I reject those thoughts because I have been there before and it has taken me to an edge of a huge deep hole that takes me to the nothing. Something inside is screaming, a voice of light saying, do not give up, but the whisper is so low. Even when it's a scream, I am afraid. What now, I ask? I want the, the voice of light to be stronger than the voice of dark. But the voice of dark now is becoming a thing, and I feel the pull. Seeing the big hole, I get this, a sensation of fear. But I am also afraid of fear, because I have lived in light before, and it's beautiful and it's peaceful. It does not feel peace right now. It's trouble, it's chaos, it's dark, it's fire. I am burning. Now I can feel it, and the inside voice feels louder, but not strong enough. It's just a screaming, no, please, no, I don't want this. How can you turn around? How can you find peace again? These thoughts are so strong and I am so weak. I can barely walk. I can barely crawl. I can barely feel. Something is moving me, but it's not me. Something is pushing me to the deep hole. I have lost control over my own body. How can these thoughts be so strong? I want light, I desire light, I want peace. I am thirsty for the light. Someone out there, can you hear me? Please help. I am afraid of the dark, please help me. I just wanted to share because, um, like I said, if those strong thoughts can lead you to that darkness. So what makes you think you cannot have strong thoughts as well for leading you into light? It is possible. It is. 
that's what happened to me last last year. I was into that moment, and I promise I will not cry. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's just that sometimes I do get tired of um of listening to some people that don't understand, of seeing people that don't believe. Because, I mean, if you think about it, we live in this world that is already divided. We have been divided by culture, so. We live in a, in a country, especially here in the United States, and I'm pretty sure other countries have already uh, experienced the same things, but we live in a country where we have so many cultures, and instead of embracing the difference and, and relate to the similarities, we're just divided. We're divided by politics. Either it's too left, it's too right, and it's not a middle point when someone can say, hey, let's meet in the middle, let's compromise. What is best for everybody, but it's just dividing us. And now it's apparently also dividing by religion. By religion, but I know one thing for sure. There's only one thing that can bring us all together. And that is faith. Thank you. And once again, it's a vivid thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs>